How's everybody doing? This is Kyle here from Kylecraft. Today I'm going to teach you how to survive the nether in Minecraft. Now the nether is one of the most dangerous places in the game. I don't know about you guys, but before I knew how to go about it, it always caught me off guard and gave me a death. So today I'm going to give you the tips I've learned to survive the nether. Now there's basically three stages of this process. There's some prep work, the actual journey through the nether, and the exit from the nether. First, let's talk prep. Now the key to success is a good preparation. First off, if you have anything diamond, leave it in the overworld. Use iron armor, iron weapons, and iron tools. There's not many situations in the nether that are going to require you that diamond armor. Yes, it can get a little thick in the nether fortress, but it's not worth losing your diamond armor and not being able to get it back. Iron armor gives you enough safety without the risk, so it's a better value overall. Same goes with iron weapons, and for iron tools, you don't really need diamond tools. I don't know if you've noticed, but netherrack does not take long to mine at all. An iron pickaxe will rip through it fast enough and without the risk of losing your diamond tools. That's the key. Avoid the risk. Now with that said, iron tools will burn out fast so make sure you bring 3 or 4 pickaxes depending on how long you're going to be in there. Oh, and by the way for weapons, make sure you bring a bow and a good amount of arrows. You'll need it to take out those gas from far away. Other tips for prep, bring tons of cobblestone. The key to cobblestone is it doesn't break from a gas fireball. If you think you can dig up a bunch of netherrack and use that as protection when you're under attack, you're wrong because the fireball will blow right through it. Bring a bunch of cobblestone so you can protect yourself if you need to, and so you can make bridges without gas blowing them up, making you fall. Again, it depends on how long you're going to be in the nether, but I would recommend you bring as much cobble as you can. I normally go in with 4-6 to six stacks, just to be safe. Another thing you need to grab in your prep work is a flint and steel. You need this just in case a gas blows up your nether portal. If your portal gets blown up in the nether while you're there and you don't have a flint and steel, you're stuck. So make sure you grab one from the overworld just in case. Now of course fire potions help if you have the opportunity to get them. You would have already gone to the nether if you have a brewing stand, but if you do have one, go back in with fire potions because they'll keep you safe if you fall in lava. The final thing you need in prep work though that's very important is food. Now I always forget food. It may just be me, but when I'm thinking nether, I, I, I never think food. Oftentimes I walk into the nether and have to turn around and walk back out to go get food. Or even worse, I'll be deep into a journey and realize I don't have food. And then you're in trouble. So make sure you grab plenty of food before you head into the nether. Again, quantity depends on how long you're going to be in there. But I would say at least a stack of cooked chicken, cooked steak, whatever you want. Now, we're done with prep work and we're on to the journey. Obviously, my first tip is to be careful. Gotta respect the nether. Don't go running around, fall off an edge and die. That's the easiest tip I can give you to stay alive. Now, when you first enter the nether, make sure you wrap up and secure your portal with cobblestone. As I mentioned, cobblestone doesn't break from gas fireballs, so wrap your portal in it and secure a little location so you can go in there if you need safety and so your portal is safe. Next, screenshot your location at the start. Press F3 and get your coordinates up. Screenshot those coordinates so you know where you need to go back to just in case you get lost. Now, most of you travelers will know you gotta keep track of where you're going. Some of you may do this in your mining adventures, but do it in the nether too. Use torches and pillars with torches on them to map out your past locations. That way, if you lose track of where you're going, you can just look at your torches and pillars to find where you were. That can help you get back to where you need to go or to just get you back on track. If you're walking around in the nether and you find a group of gas coming to attack you, quickly build a cobblestone protection. You can make a little 3x3 block and be plenty safe from those gas. From there, you can either very carefully make a staircase down into the nether rack, going underground will keep you safe and out of reach from those gas, or if you're like me, you can bowl out your bow and arrow and take them out. Now the next tip is a pretty simple one, but don't dig ledges. If you're on a plateau area that has an edge real close by, don't dig down. Oftentimes those ledges are hovering in the air. There's a few blocks underneath them, and if you dig down too far too fast, you'll fall to your death. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Another tip to avoid that falling, hold shift a lot. I oftentimes hold shift in the nether. It makes sure you don't fall. If you're walking close to an edge, hold shift. If you pillar it up to dig out some glowstone, hold shift. It's simple, but it's easy to forget, and it can very easily help you avoid dying. Now, another tip here you probably know, don't hit the pigmen. I'm sure you know if you hit the zombie pigmen, they will attack you in swarms. That's no fun. I mention this though, because I've accidentally hit them when I was going for quartz. I was trying to mine quartz, there was a zombie pigman right by, I went to mine it, I hit him, and it was all over. So my tip is, don't mine a block that a zombie pigman is standing on top of. If they're standing on top of a block of nether quartz, 
it's not worth messing up and losing all your resources just for a few pieces. Another helpful tip I have for you if you don't know this one, bring a water bucket and cauldron. Now this could have been said in prep work, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video you haven't gone into the nether yet so you could still get it. I didn't say it in prep work because it's not one of the key things that I bring into the nether. I think it's important if you're in hardcore mode and you can't get your hearts back, but when I get on fire, I dig into a wall and stay there until I'm safe. Eat some food, heal up, and then I go out. But if you like to, you can bring a cauldron and a water bucket and it's the only way you can get water into the nether. If you get lit on fire, you can just throw your cauldron down, fill it with water, and jump into it. That'll get rid of the fire and you'll be safe to go. All these tips will help with your journey throughout the nether. The last one I can give is when you get to the nether fortress. The fortress gets very intense. The best tip I have for the fortress is to block off paths and control where mobs are coming from. Oftentimes you'll get to this four way intersection and have a bunch of mobs coming at you from different sides. If you block off those paths with cobblestone, they can't get through, you can limit the amount of people coming at you at once. The same applies to the blaze spawners if you come up to them and you can block it. They'll light you up with fireballs if you're not safe. So get your cobble and block it off. That way you can secure it and come back to it to make a blaze farm later if you want. That covers all the tips I have for you when I journey through the nether. But the journey doesn't stop there. We gotta exit the nether. Oftentimes that's one of the most dangerous parts. You have tons of nether quartz, glowstone, armor for your horses, saddles, anything you found. And you're trying to get out as fast as possible. You want to keep that stuff safe so you rush to get out and you die. So that's the first tip I have for you. Slow down and take your time. Follow the same tips I gave you in the journey for your way out. Don't just disregard them all and just run. That won't work out. Hopefully you march your path well and you can follow the torches back, protect yourself with cobble if you need to, and just take it slow while you advance forward. Now, if you're deep in the nether and you're not confident you can get back, throw everything you've gathered in a chest and screenshot the location. That way you know your stuff is safe and not gone when you die. If you're kinda confident you can make it back but not sure, put some of your most valuable resources in the chest and then head back. If you screenshot those coordinates, you can always come back and find them later. I've done that a couple times. Put my stuff in the chest, which you can normally find in another fortress, and come back to gather it up later. Now if you didn't mark your path well enough and you can't find your way back, use that screenshot of the coordinates you took right in the beginning of the journey. It won't give you the safe route that you had with the marked path, but at least you'll know how to find your way back. And if you're really in trouble, pinned down by some gas without arrows, almost dead, call in a friend. If you're playing on a server, call in a friend, have them come into the nether and come find you. Tell them your coordinates and they'll be able to get to you quick. It's much easier to journey through the nether with a friend than alone. If you're playing in a single player world, make sure to focus on those tips I mentioned in the journey. And stay safe, you'll be good. Follow that marked path back, get to your cobblestone protected portal, and success, you've made it through the nether. So yes, those are my tips for surviving the nether. Now, I'm not a master of Minecraft. If you have any tips yourself for surviving the nether, comment them down below. The only other tip I can give you for the nether is sort of like a project to do. Make a nether base underground so you can travel fast. I'm sure many of you know about that, but regardless if you do or don't, let me know if you want me to do a tutorial on how to do that. So yes, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. YouTube's made it tricky lately to find videos. But that's it for this one. Thanks for coming.